In Colombia, a criminal kingpin is having a good time with a lady in a jacuzzi when he is killed by a sniper right there in the water. Meanwhile, in Virginia, a former Marine is spending the evening drinking heavily in a motel. He grabs a gun and decides to end things for himself after looking at pictures of his old squad and remembering how many of them are no longer alive, not to mention the PTSD left behind by war. A funeral is held in his honor a few days later. Master Sergeant Brandon, a former member of the late Marine squad, laments the loss of his old friend and is perplexed by his choices, wondering how a legend could end up like that. His friend Major Miller reminds him that their job can take a toll on a soldier's mind, which makes Brandon wonder if it will happen to him as well. Miller has also assigned Brandon a new mission in Columbia to assist the DEA with an important case. Brandon refuses because he is grieving, but Miller ignores him and forces him to take the car that is already waiting for him to take him to the agency's private jet. Brandon arrives in Bogota hours later, and the driver who picks him up can't stop fanboying over him because Brandon is well known for his incredible career as an elite sniper. When they arrive at the National Police Headquarters, Brandon meets Santiago, the officer assigned as his observer, and Captain Garza, the police leader who serves as a liaison between Colombian cops and the American DEA. Finally, there's Master Gunnery Sergeant Beckett, who is also Brandon's father. Although they are delighted to see each other again after a long absence, father and son continue to address each other by their rank in order to maintain professionalism. The meeting begins, and Brandon learns that his target is Morales, the cartel's boss in Colombia. His empire controls 60% of the contraband routes leading to the U.S. border and specializes in recruiting street children to be his thugs. His network is impossible to trace, and he hasn't been seen in 10 years, but he's returned and they know this because all of Morales' rivals have died in the last few days, including the man in the jacuzzi. The difficulty of that shot suggests that this sniper is ex-military, and Morales must have hired him to eliminate competition. Recent information indicates that Morales will be on his farm soon, and the agents want Brandon to act as backup while they raid the place, but Brandon declines because he dislikes babysitting. An argument ensues, which is abruptly interrupted by DEA agent Kate, who is enraged because they began the meeting without her and this is her operation. She has brought all of the farm information for them to study and wants to know if Brandon will take the mission seriously. Brandon admits he dislikes this type of assignment but promises to do as he is told. The following day, Kate's DEA agents and Garza's cops approach the farm, while Brandon remains hidden in the woods with Santiago. Beckett watches the live transmission from the office, where he is joined by Homeland Security agent Samson, who is concerned that Beckett and Kate are wasting time and resources on unconfirmed intel. The team parks their trucks at a safe distance and approaches on foot, taking cover in the trees until the time comes. The team rushes in and kicks down the house door as soon as Beckett gives them permission, only to discover that this activates a trap and the entire building explodes. The agents in the back survive the blast, but those in the front die, with the exception of Garza, who is shot in the leg by a sniper hired by Morales. Kate, who is hiding behind the farm car, decides to go to him and try to help him escape, but the sniper shoots again and kills Garza on the spot. Brandon is able to locate the enemy and fire back, but the other sniper dodges the bullet just in time and flees before Brandon can try again. Later, at the station, an enraged Samson demands an explanation for what happened, and they conclude that someone in the police force must have been selling information. Kettle and Brandon also point out that the sniper waited for Kate to come out before shooting at Garza again, implying that she was his target all along and that shooting Garza's leg was just bait. The second shot only failed because Kate had inadvertently placed Garza between herself and the sniper. Samson wants to cancel the entire operation, but Kate refuses to give up without a proper fight, and their argument lasts so long that Brandon breaks it up to make a deal. The team has 48 hours to track down the enemy, and if they fail, they'll accept to return home. After the meeting, Beckett tells Brandon that the other sniper probably knows who he is because of that shot, so he should be cautious. Brandon then goes to his room at the DEA's safe house in Las Cruces, where he'll be staying while working in Colombia. No matter how many times the other agents swear the security is top-notch, Brandon believes any competent sniper could easily shoot into any of the rooms. Meanwhile, El Diablo, Morales' hired sniper, is having fun with his girlfriend when he is abruptly interrupted by a call informing him that Kate and Brandon are staying in the DEA safe house. El Diablo already failed to kill them, so now is his chance to make amends. Back to Brandon, he's reading an article about his friend's death on the internet, which mentions a crisis in the armed forces because most soldiers leave the military with various mental illnesses on their shoulders. Kate abruptly interrupts him to thank him for his assistance during the meeting, then admits she has never lost a man under her command and is struggling to cope. She also thinks something is strange about the way Garza was shot, and Brandon agrees that the shot the sniper managed to pull off should be impossible to pull off according to the laws of physics. Kate explains that she doesn't want the sniper, she wants Morales, but Brandon points out that her narrow-minded 
mindedness has resulted in the deaths of many people. Kate rushes out of the room, breaking down in tears as she enters the elevator because Garza was a close friend of hers and she feels guilty about his death. While Brandon continues to research new types of bullets and uses a radio to check on Santiago's guard shift, Kate goes to a popular bar and becomes violent with a harasser who lets his hands wander too much. She then meets with Carlos, a priest well known in the community for his work with the poor. Carlos believes Kate can't win against such a dangerous man as Morales and that she should give up, but Kate refuses, so Carlos decides to share what little information he has. El Diablo is the sniper's name, and since he was hired by Morales, he should know where Morales' hideout is. Before departing, Carlos promises to contact Karen if he discovers anything else. When Santiago finally notices something dangerous, he calls Brandon urgently, and Brandon rushes to the roof with his own weapon. Santiago is correct. There is a sniper in the distance, and Brandon and El Diablo are now waiting to see who will fire first. Brandon is the first to fire, but El Diablo deflects the bullet before firing back. Brandon decides to hide behind a wall after jumping out of the way, hoping to fool El Diablo into thinking he's dead. The next morning, the team retrieves the bullet and video calls Miller to gain his expertise on the subject. This is a smart bullet with laser guidance technology that allows you to control its trajectory. El Diablo might not be a former army officer after all, or even a good shot. The bullets are just doing the work for him. Miller also mentions that this safe house isn't very safe, which validates Brandon's concerns. Samson concludes the meeting by promising to find a suitable shelter by contacting the CIA. Meanwhile, Morales is in his safe house, playing games with his boys, though he teaches them to fight for what is rightfully theirs without fear, which makes many of them fear him more than respect him. Morales then goes to his office, intending to call El Diablo, only to find him already sitting in his chair. El Diablo wants to be paid for all of the competitors he's killed. But Morales refuses because he didn't kill Kate or Brandon as well to finish the job and kicks El Diablo out of his house, claiming he doesn't need him. The following morning, Kate and Brandon are driving to a new safe house when she receives a phone call from Carlos, who has discovered El Diablo has a girlfriend. He texts Kate her address but warns her to be cautious because Morales' men have control of the neighborhood. After hanging up, Kate informs Brandon that she has realized he is only interested in finding the sniper because his bullets are better than his skills. Brandon admits it's true, but before he can say anything else, the car is hit by a truck. When a group of men working for Morales emerge from the truck and open fire on them, Brandon and the cops who had been accompanying them fire back. While Kate flees for cover, Morales' thugs are all killed but Santiago is also killed. Brandon notices Kate has vanished and realizes she has dropped her phone on the car seat. The text on the screen still shows the address Carlos sent. Kate can tell there are a lot of men watching her as soon as she walks into the seedy neighborhood. She knocks on the right door and meets Morales' girlfriend Mara, who immediately tries to close the door when Kate shows her badge. Kate tries to stop her, but this attracts the attention of all the thugs who have gathered around her, and Mara pushes her back so that Morales' men can apprehend her. A fight breaks out between Kate and the men, and despite landing a few blows, she is overpowered and pinned against the wall. When the thugs start lining up to take advantage of her, Brandon appears and begins shooting them. A number of them are killed, though one escapes on a stolen bike and Karen captures the last one. When she's about to knock him out, Mara makes her let go by threatening her with a firearm. Luckily, Brandon surprises Mara from behind, allowing Kate to disarm her. She also removes Mara's locket, which contains a photograph of her with El Diablo. Brandon sends a photo of it to his father so that it can be run through the database with face recognition software. Brando also informs him that they were ambushed earlier, implying that someone is still spying on them. Until they figure out who, he and Kate will be hiding somewhere else rather than the designated shelter, without even telling Beckett the address. At the station, Samson is becoming agitated about the situation and accuses Beckett of giving his son too much power over the operation, but Beckett dismisses him. Kate decides to take Brandon to her old neighborhood so that Carlos can keep an eye on them for a while. Morales has moles in the police, according to the priest, because he is friends with many powerful people, not to mention all the small criminals who look up to him. Kate realizes that tampering with Morales' network may cause him to emerge from his hiding place, and Carlos agrees to share some names he knows. Several bodies begin to appear all over town over the next few days, belonging to various men who work for Morales, including his banker. Brandon is to blame for this, as he has been murdering every name Carlos has provided. Miller calls Beckett to inform him that Brandon is out of control, but Beckett has no idea where to look for his son. Carlos lends a sympathetic ear to Brandon one evening and learns about the Marine who died before this all began. Brando is still concerned about the possibility of the same thing happening to him, so Carlos explains that the only way to avoid such a death is to forgive yourself for the moral damage you've caused. Meanwhile, Morales finally leaves his hideout, but only to search for El Diablo at Mara's. He's tired of losing men, so he pays El Diablo all the money he owes him in one go and promises much more if Brandon is stopped. 
Later, Samson and Becca call Miller to inform him of the latest information they've uncovered about El Diablo, his real name is Enrique, and he's an ex-sniper defense. He arrived in Colombia from Venezuela nine months ago, but he vanished after crossing the border. Miller refuses to remove Brandon and Kate from the operation, arguing that they are now doing more for the mission than anyone else. Meanwhile, El Diablo pays a local to tell him where Kate and Brandon are hiding, this is how he learns about Father Carlos. Later that night, Kate receives a mysterious message from Carlos instructing her to meet him at the plaza at 10 p.m., but when she calls him, he does not answer. It's obviously a trap, so Kate and Brandon sneak into a building in front of the plaza and wait for any signs that El Diablo is nearby. A few hours later, a truck pulls up beside the park, and Kate recognizes the men getting out as the thugs from Mara's neighborhood. These men do something mysterious behind the truck before leaving, and when the vehicle is moved, Kate and Brandon are shocked to find Carlos tied to a park tree. Kate wants to go rescue him, but Brandon stops her, reminding her that this is El Diablo baiting her. Brandon decides to save Carlos by shooting the rope, but his shot only grazes it, revealing their location to El Diablo. Fortunately, Brandon manages to land a second shot and free Carlos before El Diablo opens fire on them, causing El Diablo to become enraged and shoot Carlos instead. The next day, the entire town gathers to bid farewell to the priest, including Kate and Brandon. Brandon, who is standing behind the crowd, notices the man who escaped on a bike the other day and pursues him through a few streets before apprehending him. When Brandon reminds him that Morales murdered the town's beloved priest, the thug bursts into tears because Carlos used to help him when he was on the streets as well. After Brandon assures him that the DEA will provide witness protection, the boy agrees to reveal the location of Morales' hideout. With this information, Samson's team only needs a few minutes to find Morales and finally arrest him. He'll now be taken to Miami to face charges in an American federal court. Brandon is concerned that El Diablo will try to prevent Morales from reaching Miami and revealing their secrets, and he is correct. El Diablo arrives in the United States a few days later with a very convincing fake passport. After clearing customs without incident, he contacts his bullet provider, who has already left him a car loaded with new weaponry. Brandon, Kate, and Beckett stand at the Homestead Air Reserve base in Florida, watching Morales arrive in a federal helicopter. Then they meet with Miller to devise a defense strategy against El Diablo, who they expect to attack while Morales is being transported to Miami. Miller also informs them that the bullets used by El Diablo have been disappearing from the DEA's own vault, implying that his mole was not with the Colombian police but with them. When Samson arrives to assist with transportation, Brandon explains the plan. Their agents will lead a convoy that protects a car with a fake Morales wearing a hood over his head to bait El Diablo into revealing his location, but the real Morales will travel in a separate van that appears to be a laundry service. While Kate, Brandon, Miller, and Samson prepare for El Diablo on a roof, the convoy departs the air base and heads for the road, where a group of criminals is already waiting. Surprisingly, the convoy is not attacked. The thugs only begin moving in their cars when the van appears, as if they had known about the ruse all along, they were most likely sent by the mole to protect his identity from Morales' confession. El Diablo also waits for the van to arrive, and after shooting it to stop it, the thugs exit their cars and open fire on the vehicle. Miller expertly kills all of these guys, and seeing that they couldn't do much, El Diablo shoots again to ensure that the van passengers are dead. The van explodes, and Brandon now knows where El Diablo is. It only takes him a few seconds to aim and finally kill him. The convoy continues on its way to Miami, where it is revealed that the man under the hood was, in fact, Morales, and the van was merely a decoy. The van was actually completely empty, and the team moved it using a remote control. Kate, Miller, and Brandon arrest Samson after discovering that he has been passing information to Morales and El Diablo all along. Samson tried to deny it, but Miller's IT team had already hacked his phone. All they needed to do now was catch him red-handed, because the text messages contained fake names and proved nothing. This forces Samson to admit he did it and admit he worked for Morales because he believed the Kingpin was their best option for preventing an atomic bomb. Kate is shocked that so many people died for this, and she punches Samson in the name of Garza and Carlos. Miller returns to Washington after apprehending Samson. Beckett has had enough action to last a lifetime and decides it's time to retire, which prompts him to give his son a warm hug before saying goodbye. He also mentions that Brandon and Kate make a good team, and Brandon admits that babysitting for the DEA might not be such a bad idea after all. 